Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. On today's episode, we're going to be putting together a Seamoy headphone amplifier kit. It's yet another one from the project pile that I'm trying to make a den into. And I've been bringing you guys along so far on the journey. I hope you enjoy this one. Just wanted to give a quick warning. If you decide to do an audio project such as this one, always be sure that the first time you give your circuit a try that you don't have your headphones on your ears. Just in case there's some kind of problem with the circuit, you don't want to damage your hearing. The one bad thing about audio projects is it usually brings out these kind of guys. So just to set the record straight, I know this is not a hi-fi headphone amplifier. I know it has a certain amount of distortion. So just save your breath. This is an electronics kit and we're trying to have a little bit of fun. So just relax. Wow, January 2017. I guess it's about time we do this kit, eh? So what does CMOI stand for? It's uh, a guy's name. It was Chu Moy. He ran a very popular headphone dedicated forum called Headwise. And he released a really nice, easy to understand pocket headphone amplifier design. And it kind of took off like wildfire. Um, it, it stirred up the DIY audio community quite a bit. And um, somehow or another, I think I, that's where I found out about it. And I was very interested in, in learning about uh, how to make a kit. Now, sadly, Mr. Moy passed away in February of 2016, but he seems to be finally remembered. And I think that's a pretty good legacy to have. Now, in uh, preparing for this video, I was remembering my first kind of uh, big boy over the ear headphones, and there were these Nova 10s from Radio Shack. And of course, on the internet, you can find the old catalogs, and here they are. I thought that was pretty neat to remember those things. Of course, those headphones are long gone, and now I've got these Sony MDR V6s I've had since 2011. They've got their own little kind of uh, following, but I kind of like them a lot. If you've got an old receiver like this, you can drive over the ear headphones, usually no problem. And these are pretty efficient, but I've usually got a phone, and they just don't quite do the job. Sometimes you need a little... More power, baby! More power, baby! More power! As you can see here, the headphones are pretty efficient, and they're 63 ohms. It's not like they're 300 ohm. But I swear, um, during some dynamic parts of the music, I think having an amplifier is going to help it out a little bit. So I couldn't find a picture of my kit, but this one's pretty close. Mine just has one extra axial capacitor than this one does. So you've got your two jacks, your knob, your potentiometer volume control, your op amp, the socket for it, an LED for power indication, some battery connectors, some other resistors in the board. There's not much else to it. It's pretty simple. So here we go. Let's get started on the kit. Fast forward mode. First thing I'm going to do here, you'll see me putting in the resistors. Trying to get the values right there and get them all in spots. Basically just six resistors here. Whoops, I guess that's seven resistors. Correction. And just uh, soldering these seven resistors real quick here. Clipping these leads off and again, always be careful. These things will pop out and try to take out your eye. So it's always a good idea to have some safety glasses on mess with those things. I think here's when I'm snapping in the uh, the two the in and out jacks. Not really on camera for one of them, but I think you see one of them there. Just snapping those in. We're gonna flip those over and then solder those in. You know, those are so short. We don't have to uh, clip any leads off of those guys. I do not believe. Thank you. 
Apologies for so much being out of the frame here. Not very useful, was it? There we go. Here I've got the socket for the IC going in and soldering that on. You may notice I had it kind of vertical to tack a first couple of pins and then I was able to, so it wouldn't fall out at that point, I could flip it over and finish the other ones. If you notice there's a notch on the uh, socket there and it goes, it matches the notch that's on the PCB so I can make sure I've got it the right direction. Here, just uh, soldering in those two film capacitors, clipping those leads off. Here's where I'm starting to put some of the capacitors in, the, the circular type capacitors. Notice there's a little plus sign on the top of the PCB. And uh, kind of like LEDs, the longer leg on the capacitor is the um, goes in the plus side. That's the positive one. And then we just flip over and solder those in. So here you'll see me um, sticking the potentiometer in there, getting ready to solder it. In the hindsight, I think I would have stuck the uh, IC into the socket because it was a little bit tight. You'll see here later when I'm trying to get the uh, amplifier IC into that socket after I've got the uh, potentiometer there in the place and soldered in. Here goes the one transistor there. It kind of follows the D shape that's on the PCB for its orientation and just uh, three legs there to solder. At this point we're pretty much done uh, other than the power LED and the battery connection and actually inserting the IC. That's the LED finished right there, but we relocate that later, so I'll have to undo that, you'll see. Now here I am getting ready to solder through the um, actual battery wires, and it took me a second, you know, I think I cut out the pauses here, I just wanted to make sure, I had to reference the documentation a couple of times, and make sure uh, these are actually wired in series, it would appear, so that's uh, how I had those hooked up. These were a little finicky to uh, solder and hold in place, but uh, finally got them. Not too bad. And here I am doing the second pair. Now the only thing that remained was the IC. And you can see it's... Uh, a little bit of a tight squeeze to get it between the capacitor, but uh, managed to get it in there. The 
here saw me uh, hooking up some batteries and turning it off and on, but uh, the LED didn't pop on. I didn't realize until later that the uh, one of the wires I soldered came loose. I had to resolder that. Once I had the electronics done, I started looking around for a case. I was wanting something to put it in since it had those 9-volt batteries and just to kind of protect it from getting shorted out and stuff like that. So I found this one I thought was pretty neat and uh, I hadn't used my 3D printer in a while, so I, I gave it a go. As you can see here, the initial results were not great. It had a bunch of stuff curling up and uh, I had the uh, a new surface for the bed. I went ahead and put that on there and we gave it another go. This time around, things stuck and uh, didn't curl up, and overall printed pretty okay. And one thing I was doing that I felt kind of silly about, you see those end plates. One of the end plates I needed to have holes in, so I had drilled them. But then I was like, wait a minute, I got a printer. Um, I can get my calipers out and try to be pretty exact. And uh, I'd always been intimidated about trying to actually change a model. I'd always just like found stuff and printed that I never modified or created anything. But uh, I finally just decided to give Tinkercad a go even though I'm being kind of intimidated by it. And I uh, put my holes in there for the LED and the uh, volume and the two uh, in and out jacks. And, uh, you know, seemed to do okay. And it seemed to print out okay. The next problem I discovered was with the, uh, I just wanted a little more room to uh, be able to get the two 9 volt batteries in there and the amp itself it was a little cramped so i went back into tinkercad since i kind of learned a little bit about it and uh, stretched that design out a little bit so now i had my case printed out uh, with the holes in the ends and uh you can see some broken tabs there i just fought with those tabs <laughs> i may redo this later but what i ended up doing was good enough for now for me um the led you know i originally had soldered it to the board but now i wanted it at the front of the case so i could see it so i had to desolder it and the leads were extremely short on the LED at that point, so I was uh, doing some pigtails here and a little bit of some really very, very tall shrink wrap to uh, get that thing extended so I could put it at the front of the amp. Uh, there I was had the power turned on and I was flipping the LED forward and backwards at the bottom of the, of the board to make sure I had the right orientation for positive and negative just to see which way it lit up. And uh, basically I just go here and I'm soldering it and I use the edge of the iron to uh, kind of tighten up the heat shrink on the one side. And then I do the uh, another leg again doing my using the same color for positive and negative but i mean you know if it's if i'm doing it and i know where they go i guess it's not that big a deal to use the same color conductor but probably would have been better to use like a typical black and red or something like that but i did not So here I've got the LED side done and now I'm uh, doing the leads in the board. This is back where, in the same spot of the board where the LED was directly in before, but now my extension leads are, are going to be soldered in there. Here I was getting the uh, hot glue gun to kind of glue, get a little glue going and hold that LED in place. You can see I uh, kind of cut through the top of that board, so the edge, I guess the uh, piece of trim, whatever you want to call it, the end cap. So it's not like a, it doesn't encapsulate it perfectly, but uh, again, at this point in the project, I had messed with this case so much I was getting kind of tired, so I put a little drop of hot glue and uh, held the LED in place there to kind of uh, just secure it good enough. And that so far that seems to be okay. Now, as I mentioned before, I'd had a little bit of a headache with this case and uh, the fasteners and stuff to hold it together. So I just got two of these uh, patented uh, non-slip uh, rubber bands. Definitely not uh, stolen or borrowed uh, hair bands from my kids. To, uh, you know, it holds it together and it does kind of keep it from slipping. So I think I'll be fine with that. At this point, you get uh, like an aux cable to your device on your input side and your headphones on the output side. And you're ready to test. And of course, you know what... Uh, I ha song I have to test with, right? Here it comes. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? I guess we're done.
I had almost forgotten, but I did need to uh, put the uh, knob on there, and it just used a small flathead screwdriver to secure that. And uh, that was about it. All in all, I think this turned out pretty well, all things considered. I mean, that case is better than no case. I think I may try to do another one, but uh, I enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. Take care. See you next time.